All right. Hi folks, Thomas Henson here with thomashenson.com. And today is another episode of Big Data, Big Questions. I have this new microphone, ready, ready to try it out. Now, um, let's get into today's question. So today we're gonna be talking about how do you start your own data engineering project? What's the best route to go? So not so much about data sources, which we've talked about in the past, but this came in from a viewer. So if you have a question, put it in the comment section here below, do our best to answer it here. Grace Chan, hey, I found your channel. Thanks for putting the time into making these videos. There are so few people talking about data engineering on YouTube, it's almost criminal. <laughs> True. I'm a data analyst looking to move into data engineering. Would you be able to do a video talking through or walking through how to go about doing your first data engineer personal project? Not just what are better technologies and services to get started, but even how to construct or how to think about the project. I was thinking of pulling Twitter data from the API into Azure Data Lake, tied it up a bit into SQL database, and then using Power BI to visualize it. Do you think that's too basic or too much for a first project? I'm pretty much lost in the sea of things to learn without much bearing. No, I think that's a great question, and that's actually something we haven't talked about or really tackled so much here. We've talked about, oh man, you know, you can take and do some kind of Hello World app with Hadoop or Spark or Python, TensorFlow, Pandas, you name it, right? Like you're able to go out and, you know, put together those technologies. However, we haven't talked about specifically what to solve, right? Do your Hello World app, but then, you know, like I always say, put your own data sources in and kind of grow it from there. So these are some tips on what I would do to start off with it. So the first thing would be, you know, find your data source. So multiple data sources out here, and we've done a couple of videos. I'll try to see if I can get these cards to work and put it up here. But this video up here talks about some of the data sources. Um, one of them that I would use, so let's just go through how I would walk through an example right here live or recorded. But I would take a data source. I know one of the ones that they have out there is around like uh, NFL football. So, you know, in America football, uh, their fantasy sports leagues are really popular. And so one of the things you could do is take all this information from all these NFL um, games and track stats. And all it is with fantasy football, if you're not familiar, is think of it as every week you're able to pick certain pick certain players and the more points and yards, or if it's a quarterback, there's, there's a lot of different metrics that go into um, how well your team does, right? And so you put together a, a fantasy team and you play against other folks and you see who has the most points and whoever has the most points wins and it kind of goes on. So there's data sets out there that have all the information around um, different players. And one of the things that I would do is, so if I was gonna use that data set, I would, you know, I would look through it and look through some of the different metrics, knowing that you know, fantasy football may be something that you're interested in. Um, try to solve a question around that. And so what do I mean about really trying to solve a question? So this is, gets into the second part. So we've got our data source. Now, what kind of questions do we want to answer? Or what problems do we want to solve, right? And we want to make it quantifiable. So we're, we're going to walk through that. But specifically, what I would be looking for in, with fantasy football is I've got all these stats, um, all, all this information around different metrics. So I would look for key indicators and see, hey, can I predict who's going to, let's just say it's about quarterbacks. Can I predict what quarterback is going to have a breakout um, fantasy football event the next week, right? And so what I'm, what I'm trying to do is see, look for key metrics, key factors in determining is, you know, is, is there something specific in the previous week's game that can help me decide, you know, if they're going to have a breakout game uh, going forward. That's just one, you know, one, one area to be able to look at, you know, and we want it to be quantifiable, right? And so what we're going to do with that is just decide on a metric to be, you know, 80% accurate, 90% accurate, put some kind of metric around it or say, hey, I think that we can predict that this person, you know, this quarterback will have this many points or this many yards based on what we saw, you know, from, from the data. Um, and so that's just a, you know, that's just one example to be able to talk about it. But I think that's a way to kind of approach it. So going from my example, let me kind of sum this up. So find your data source and look for different things. And so going back to what you were talking about, um, pulling out some Twitter API data. So yeah, I mean, and it doesn't have to be a prediction, right? You can say that, you know, you're looking for, you know, different, different things within Twitter. So sentiment analysis, right? So the stock market this week just went up pretty, pretty big. So maybe you could do some kind of sentiment analysis and say, hey, you know, 
with a 10% increase in, in positive <laughs> positive things on Twitter, does the stock market go up? And once again, you know, you're, you're, you're doing this to learn, you're doing something with, with a project, but this is something that you continue to grow uh, with it too. So, you know, you're looking for it and it's okay if you come out and, you know, the metrics or the assumptions you make don't work. That's great, right? Because you're learning how to prove that and to start that out. So those are kind of my tips. And, you know, to answer your question um, there at the end, I don't think that's too basic for a first project, right? You know, be able to just get it in there, clean it up, put it into uh, some kind of SQL database and see what you can start doing with it. I mean, that's perfect, right? Um, and then you can build on that too. Um, so it's not really so much about the tools that you use. Now it is if you're doing it to get to some kind of objective, right? Like if you know that, hey, there's a role within my company or, you know, I'd really like to be a part of this one company and I know they use Spark, right? So you'd want to use those tools, but that's, that's a different conversation. You know, I think, I think if you're just starting out and you're trying to learn and, and understand this, then yeah, uh, start with something like that. But, you know, my encouragement is, you know, find some interesting data sources, maybe some things you're interested in uh, and try to answer some questions with it and then back it up with data. If you have any questions or comments, put it here in the comment section below. If you have any ideas, you know, if, if, if you liked what I said or you want to add to it more to help out, to help out Grace, um, just, you know, put it in the comment section here below. Give me your tips. Uh, tell me your data sources, what some interesting projects you've worked on. And until next time, I'll see you again on Big Data, Big Questions.